Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on porch time today. Taking a break from the garden, it has done got to be pretty hot and pretty steamy out here right now. Um, so I just needed a break. I thought I would come sit down on the cabin porch and, you know, while I was working I was kind of like, what, what would benefit on porch time the most? You know, I mean, we talk about a lot of different subjects and uh, and, I, and it's, no, it's no secret that the controversial things get more views. And I don't know if it's because people click on more or what, but I don't like being controversial about a lot of stuff. I'd rather just talk about bare facts. I'd like to talk about something that's going to benefit somebody. And with what's going on in the world today, uh, with... Uh, with the with the virus and stuff like that and uh, and the economy and food and all these kind of things uh, I want to talk about something that is essential to every one of our lives whether we know it or not and I want to talk about dirt literally I want to talk about dirt because that's where I've been I've been in the garden uh, I've been moving dirt. We're having a second pond built, and I've been moving dirt from that pond, the black dirt, uh, and piling it up in big piles because we have so much of it that he doesn't need, and I could use rather than just scattering it out everywhere. And uh, this dirt, uh, just go ahead and be honest with y'all, this is the dirt that we've been using here at Deep South Homestead for a long time. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina, I had a dozer push up a lot of it out of a bottom down here where we built the pond, first pond at and put it on the hillside back there. That's where we've been growing and we have grown some of the most amazing food in that soil. Uh, it's a little acidic, but we uh, neutralize it with lime, uh, get the pH up in it and then we do our soil samples and stuff and then it works out really good. But let's, let's talk about dirt. Now, you know, we look at it every day uh, well, some of us do. Some of us live in concrete jungles and we never see dirt. I mean, I didn't realize that till a, till a friend of mine went to New York City and he'd come back and he said, Dude, he said, we got people up there making laws that has, never that has never stood on dirt. They live in an apartment. They get out of it. They, they walk on a concrete sidewalk, get in a taxi, go downtown, get off on a, on a blacktop road, get into a sidewalk, Go in a high rise, stay there all day, come back and do they do this six days a week. On the weekends, they the only dirt that they possibly ever see is if they go to the park in Central Park there. And he says, and those are the people that's making rules about farming and land and all of it. He said they got no clue about anything. He said, I was blown away when I was there. He was in the legislative branch and uh and it got me to thinking, you know. Dirt is something I think we all take for granted. We see it every day. Uh, we see stuff growing in it. But we don't really think about it. Do you know that dirt is alive? Dirt is a living organism. Now, the sad part about a lot of our farmland today is that all the living organisms in all the soil has been killed. They go in and they destroy it with herbicides and pesticides and all this kind of stuff. And, and the, the living organisms in that soil ceases to exist. And then we have what's just called dead soil. It's no good for nothing, really. And then they have to go back and they have to try to amend it with different things to get it to, to function and do whatever they need it to do. Um, I, I have to go back to my dad. My dad would tell me that and then this is the mentality of our uh, of my dad's generation and, and back. Dad told me he said, "Well, about every three to four years, we cleared what was called new ground." He said we'd go in and take the trees and the and, and stumps out and stuff like that. We didn't move the topsoil off of it. We just pulled them and we put, either we burnt the stumps out or we pulled them with horses and mules and stuff like that. And we farmed that ground till it didn't produce anything anymore. And then when it was where it wouldn't produce anymore, we moved to another spot with a garden, and we made a garden in what's called new ground there again. And that just didn't resonate well with me. I said, Dad, I said, 
y'all were just depleting it of everything. He said, with well, some, everybody was so poor we had no money for fertilizer. And we that's all we could do. Land was plentiful. He said, you could get land anywhere for just a few bucks an acre. He said, I've seen land go for 50 cents an acre. You know, and and he says, and then people couldn't afford it. And he said, we, it was just always the easiest thing to do was just find new ground because it was still alive. It had not been sucked to death or sapped to death by uh, plants and trees. So we, we see that soil is actually alive. But now what does it take to make that soil alive? Well, here at Deep South Homestead, you've heard me say that we make our own dirt. And... The way we do that is I'm, I'm always clearing land here. Y'all don't ever see me do that kind of stuff. And most generally, that's things that Wanda don't even see me do. I'm out, uh, I'm out pushing trees. I'm out, um, you know, clearing brush piles and stuff like this, and making piles here and a pile over yonder and another pile over yonder. And and rather than push it up in one big pile and burn it, I just push it up in smaller piles and I I just let it rot. Now weeds will grow up in there because I've expoil, exposed the soil to sunlight, but I don't pay any attention to that. I just, every so often I'll go in there and take the tractor and just try to roll it up and after about, in our heat and humidity in about three weeks, I can go in there and it'll all just start cracking and crushing and crumbling all up because it's just literally the humidity and the heat. Those little small trash piles almost set their own cells on fire to get so hot. And after about six months of that, I can begin to turn it and when I do there'll be worms all in it everywhere and, and it'll be so wet and sticky and uh, and then in about a year I can go in and scoop it up and bring it out and when I put it in the gardens I can go through it and take the small sticks out of it and put them back in the bucket and go dump them back in the woods again. That's how we're making our soil through rotted debris. Now let's look at what's make soil alive. First off, you've got to have carbons. Carbons are dead. They're like, let's talk about composting because composting and soil are basically the same thing. You're creating soil when you compost. Uh, you, you put carbons into a compost pile. That's things like dead leaves, dead plants. I mean, it's something that has no life to it. It's a carbon. It's dead. Then you come back and you put your nitrogens in it. Now that's your green stuff. Now that's your fuel for that compost pile or that's the fuel for the soil. Like when we mow our yards, we cut the green grass off, it falls back onto our yard, it becomes it goes back into the grass as a nitrogen form and it's always it's always fertilizing the yard. It's always giving its food back to it. Um, then we have to do what we call and compost piles that work best or compost piles that once you get the carbons and the nitrogens in there, if you'll go and take a big scoop of just good old rich dirt out of the woods or somewhere and come dump it into it and then cover it up, the living organisms in the soil from the woods expand and feed on this nitrogens and carbons and stuff and it eventually turns it into rich black dirt. Worms move into it and you get verma, you get, you get uh, worm castings in it and all this kind of stuff and it ends up being some of the most rich soil and in, in it's alive. Soil is just like our human body. Soil is an organic organism. Our body is an organic organism. Now there's some misconceptions out there about soil and body in our bodies. Our bodies is an organic organism. The soil is an organic organism. When we grow a, a vegetable in the soil, it grows a vegetable. That vegetable is an organic organism. Our body can assimilate it. It can, it can take it in through the mouth. It, the body, the blood cells and everything in the body can, um, can, can break it down. The acids in the body can break it down. The blood cells can pull out of it what it needs and it, and it fuels the body. The problem with food today is that food that's grown like that, before it's sent to a grocery store, it has radiation run through it. It's irradiated. That kills all the living organisms in that food. Like a bell pepper, for instance, it, it's irradiated. If you buy a bell pepper at a store, it's been irradiated. It has nothing in it. It's not alive. It's just dead. 
Okay, it has nothing. And that is so that the shelf life of that bell pepper can be extended so that the sore doesn't sell it fast enough, it won't go bad. You take a bell pepper you just pick out of the garden and bring it in the house, one that you get from the store and bring it in the house, the one in the store will last for weeks. The one that you pick out of your garden at home will go bad within the first week usually. And if you can keep it in the bottom drawer of the refrigerator and make it last longer, but it begins to start shriveling up and, and it'll actually go bad in no time. That's because it's alive. The one from stores are dead. All food in grocery stores is dead. Now, people sit back and, and I see our bodies are organic organisms. We need that living food to go into our bodies to provide living life for our bodies. But when we put dead food from a grocery store into a live body, then what happens is the body has to create acid because there's nothing in the, there's nothing in the food that you're eating that has the ability to break it down. There's no acids, no enzymes, no nothing in that food because it's been killed through the radiation. And when we take it into the body, the body has to create acids in the stomach extra uh, beyond what it normally would to break that food down so that our bodies can begin to try to get something out of it. That's the reason we have GERD, uh, acid reflux, indigestion, all these kind of problems is our bodies are producing extra acid to break down this fake food that we're eating today that's really just dead. It has nothing in it. And we have to take something like the purple pill or Prilosec and all this stuff. And all those pills are, you can call, you can call a doctor, you can ask them, whatever. All those pills are, are hydrochloric acid that that's a time release for about a 24 hour period in our stomach to break that food down so our body doesn't have to make the acid. That's all though, they're just acid pills. That's all they are. Now, soil is a lot like that. Soil needs living organisms put back into it in order for it to function properly. That's why we put the, the like the grass clippings that are the nitrogens that's alive and we take the carbons that are dead and we put in it and when they come together and then the microbes, it creates this beautiful harmony in the soil that makes it luscious and it, and it, and it makes it rich and plants can absorb from that and they can take that from that. But now, just like I've told you on previous, like the previous porch time, you can use a synthetic fertilizer and you can put it in the soil and the plant will recognize it as a, a nitrogen, a, a, a potassium or a phosphate, a phosphate or phosphorus and, and it will take it in. Now, the human body is a lot like that. If you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes you with a medication, that medication is synthetic. It's not real. It's a synthetic version of what the body really needs to get healthy. And even though it's not what the body really needs, and there will be some side effects from it of some kind, it will be diarrhea or constipation or, you know, acid reflux or swelling, uh, inflammation, you know, there, there's all different kinds of problems that we have from medication because it's synthetic. Our bodies are not designed to absorb anything synthetic, but we do it anyway. And we want to fuss and complain because we are. someone uses uh, commercial fertilizer on their plant, but yet we'll pop a pill in our mouth that's synthetic. I mean, it makes no sense to me whatsoever, you know. Um, but our body can assimilate it. There are some repercussions for assimilating it, but it can do it, and it does many times benefit the body and causes the body to get beyond whatever we're experiencing, but in usually the long run is it always has a side effect that creates some other problem. Plants, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Uh, they can assimilate from synthetic fer fertilizers, and you don't get too many repercussions from it. Uh, you may not get the sweetness out of the, like if you grow a, a, a tomato or a bell pepper, you might not get the sweetness out of it that you normally would get. It might be just a little less taste than what it would normally have. 
but the nutritional value will still be there. Uh, may not be quite as high on the organic scale as it normally would, but it's still there nonetheless. And guys, that's what growing vegetables is all about. It's about amending the soil. Now, a lot of y'all said on the last video, Danny, would you do a video about amending the soil? Well, I amend my soil in the fall. I, I, I wait till fall. The reason for that being is most of my gardens a lot of times will lay over winter. Uh, a lot of them I grow in over winter. But what I do is the fall is when all the leaves begin to fall off the trees. That's my carbons that I need. I will go and I will dump those carbons all in my garden. I will take them right over with a lawnmower and I'll chop them all up or I'll put them through my shredder and I'll chop them all up and I'll just blow them all out in the garden everywhere because I have a very sandy soil here and it needs a lot of organic matter. And then I'll come back behind that and I'll usually put some, uh, some nitrogen in on top of it because it needs the nitrogen. And I'll, you know, lots of times I use a synthetic version of nitrogen because I used to use chicken fertilizer but I ended up with so many weeds that I, I can't control the weeds now hardly. We're having to use ground cover just to be able to have a garden. And then I will go in and take this black dirt that we have from these trash piles that I've let rot down and I'll put it on top of it, which that's my living organisms in there. And then I take the tiller on the tractor and I till all that together and I just leave it. And when springtime comes, it's had time to really sweeten up. And I may lime it, uh, but what I do do always is take soil samples. Now a lot of people don't know about soil samples. If you, you can go to your local county extension service. All counties have a county extension service. And you can request a, a little square box. It's a little, not, it's a little bit taller than it is square for soil samples. And they will send that off for you and so there's a fee for it. In Mississippi, it's an $8 fee for each box. Uh, Mississippi, it goes to Mississippi State University. They do an analysis on it based on what you want to use that area for. I can take dirt out of my pond. I can send it off and I can say, look, this is for a pond. They will send me back an analysis on that dirt that goes in the pond. They will tell me how much lime I need, how much fertilizer I need. They'll tell me all about what I need for that pond. You can send it off for fruit orchards and it will tell you, come back and tell you everything you need for fruit orchards. Or you can send it off and ask for a vegetable garden. It will come back and tell you everything you need for a vegetable garden. It will tell you what's in the soil and how high it is in the soil. That is information that is extremely valuable for you when it comes to trying to grow your own food. And guys, in the world we live in today, growing your own food is going to be essential. Now I do realize that a lot of people I'm noticing this more and more, uh, have very small places to grow. And because you have small places to grow, it's even more important for you as an individual to make sure you get your soil right. And all it takes for you is one flub up or one mistake from something like a Remedy, a 2,4-D, Grazon, uh, anything like that, and your garden is screwed and you don't have room to move over and do something else because that's the only space you have. So you have to be very careful about what you purchase to go in that soil because Grazon is one of those products that, that interferes with the cell structure of plants and plant cell structures have a way of interlinking themselves together. Well Grazon tampers with that cell structure and it causes them to do like a blockchain. They just kind of stack on top of one another and they don't do what they normally would do in the the leaves will all curl up and twist up and I mean, eventually kill a plant. That's what it's designed to do is mess with the cell structure of plants, uh, broadleaf plants. And once that's in your soil, then your vegetable garden cannot assimilate the nutrition out of that soil because it's being blocked by a chemical, a herbicide. And once that happens, your soil is tainted for anywhere from 18 months to two to three years and you, you, you only have a small choice you can either dig it all out and replace it which is what I've had to do in one of my greenhouses because it happened to me or you can go in there and plant some monocots you can put corn you can plant grass uh, grass it, it will pull it out 
It's just lots of things like that you can do to try to get your soil back where it needs to be. But guys, it's extremely important in the world we live in today to know soil and to amend soil. To put into soil what it needs. Put living stuff back into the soil. Just like our bodies, like we talked about. Our bodies are a living organism. Soil is a living organism. It's alive. Whether you look like it's dead laying out there, it's just like dirt, but it's alive. Now, I'm a firm believer in permaculture. I am actively trying to turn my whole homestead into permaculture. It's going, and permaculture doesn't happen overnight. As a matter of fact, most places with permaculture takes anywhere between five and ten years to make it happen. And a lot of people go, well, I don't, I don't understand permaculture. Well, permaculture, if you don't understand permaculture, just go to the forest and look in the forest. The forest is a living being. It's a living creature. It's a living organism. It's, it has its own ecosystem. Uh, you have the, the, the trees that grow giant, and you have smaller stuff that grows out under those trees, and smaller stuff that grows out under that. And then in the shades of some things grow some plants. And the whole forest floor takes care of itself. It feeds itself. It never has to be fertilized, and yet it flourishes. It does wonderful. That is the ecosystem that I'm trying to create here. And that is the ecosystem that will eventually determine... How will we survive if an LCE happens and we cannot come up with commercial fertilizer or we cannot come up with organic fertilizer? We can't use our animal fertilizer and all these, we have no way to fertilize anything. This is what it will come down to is permaculture. And that's why now, while we can do things, I am creating permaculture. Because I've been doing it now, let's say, this is probably my fifth, sixth year, fifth be my fifth or sixth year doing permaculture a lot of my stuff is already taking care of itself I don't even have to do anything with it it uh, it's pretty much does its own thing and that is a beautiful thing to see you know uh, I've learned what to plant where to plant it that's key with everything is where to plant what you can't just go out there and stick something in the ground somewhere because you like the fact that it looks good there it's got to be, can it function there? Can it be healthy there? If I plant it there, is it going to thrive in the location that I put it? Some things are made for partial shade. Some things are made for full sun. It's all about putting something where it needs to go and putting it in the right environment. Simply because... In certain places, those soils are different. Y'all saw as we had this first pond dug at the difference in the soils. The first six foot of that pond was pure black dirt. Then we got down to some lighter colored dirt. Then we got into the dark red clay is what we needed for the dam. And we had, and we had to transfer it all the way around and put it in the dam. In other words, we had to move dirt and put it in a different location in order to make this project work. But if you're planting trees or if you're planting a garden, you need to know the soil types. You need to take a post hole digger and you need to dig down. You need to see how deep the topsoil is. You need to see how far it is to the bedrock. I mean, you need or clay level, whatever you have, wherever you're at. You need to learn. You need to know those things, you know. Uh, Soil structure is probably one of the most important things you can know about gardening. I don't care how much you, I don't care what you do to a garden, you can put all the fertilizer you want in a garden, and unless that soil is not right, it will not use that fertilizer at all. Unless the pH of that soil is right, you've got to lime it. It has got to be limed in order for that soil to even be beneficial and use any of the fertilizer you put out there. You can go put goat fertilizer, cow fertilizer, sheep fertilizer, you can put all that in there you want, chicken fertilizer, and the plants will do okay, but you put the lime in there with it and get that pH right and you'll see stuff do what I call pushing plants because they will grow. 
I've got peppers in my greenhouse right now that's over six feet tall and done turned into big trees. You know, that's what is that's what it's all about is making this happen. So guys, that's what porch time is about today. It's about soil. It's about dirt because dirt is key to life. Think about it like that. The dirt that you see every day is the key to your existence because that dirt is alive just like you're alive. However you treat your body is how you should treat that soil if you want it to provide for you like it needs to provide for you. So guys, I hope today on Porch Time has been a little bit educational. It's not been controversial or anything like that. Uh, I know it probably won't get the views that it normally does, but I wanted to say, let's talk about dirt. So guys, have a blessed day and thank you from Deep South Homestead.